Boom. Yeah, this is going to work out. And we get to fit you both in the screen, too, so that works. So I, I didn't see you on Facebook, right? So I can't I can't tag you on Facebook. Are you on Facebook? I am on Facebook. You are on Facebook. Okay, mm -hmm. let, me, let me tag you. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see here. Okay, so we have Jane and Raimo. Raimo, Raimo, yeah. And Jane, is that how you say it? Yes, Janne. Janne, Janne. Like with, mm -hmm. like what? Like with Y, Janne. Janne. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it. All right. Okay. Let's see, Janne. Okay, let me see if I can find it on uh, uh, here. Let's see. And Surname is Seli, S-E-L-I. Okay. S-E-L-I. There you are. Uh, Jandala Art? Is that you? Okay. Yes. Jane Seli. Okay, let me just tag it. Let me tag it for you. Mm -hmm. I'll do it on here. Right on. Anytime we have technical problems, we always have a great show, so. <laughs> you know, it's so bizarre. Both of us felt like past four or five hours super dizzy and I felt even nauseous and then I wanted to meditate or dance or try to get into my body but nothing worked and really? then I just gave up and I was like okay I don't know what's happening but then I said to Angel like please make this work and we'll see do you think that it has something to do with the energy or with doing the show what do you I think I feel that the energy is for sure um, I feel the energies very detailed when they come towards Earth. And usually I have to sleep for many hours. When okay. it's intense. So I know that right now, like the Schumann resonance is spiking and and I can I can feel them. Well, something's going on. <laughs> okay, let me I'm going to pull up the Facebook and just that way we can at least see comments on the Facebook. Okay. All right. I got you in there. I tagged Yane on the video let me okay here we go well i'm glad to hear uh oh my god please don't look at me <laughs> <laughs> i keep waiting for this uh the regeneration of the cells to start showing in our physical appearance <clears throat> <laughs> so i'm glad i'm not the only one because it was a very strange night and uh it, there's been a lot of strange nights but Last night seemed to be uh, like a compilation of the last few weeks in one night, and all, so much stuff happened. So I don't know if it's, uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm doing a show, I'll feel the energy of the people. Mm -hmm. And then I usually, you know, like pull up their higher self and, you know, before the show starts, you know, in my head and uh, just try to break bread with them. But uh, yeah, so whatever you're feeling, I'm feeling too. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I just rolled my butt out of bed about 45 minutes ago, uh, waking yeah. up every hour all night long, wondering if the spaceships were going to land or, you know, Jesus was going to come down on a chariot or something was going to happen. Mm -hmm. It feels like it. So you you guys are in Estonia, Estonia, and I just got to say, uh, what a great way to end the week. Uh, I don't even know what we're going to talk about. I never do, but... You're absolutely beautiful, the both of you. And together, you're just dynamite. So <laughs> I know there must be a story up until the time you met, but let's try, uh, first of all, welcome to the show. And thank you thank for coming you. in. And thank you for your patience, getting this tech stuff worked out. We still got, yeah, we're only 13 minutes late. 13 minutes on Friday the 13th over here. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Nice. Goddess Day, right? Goddess Day. Um, so how long have y'all been together? It's going to be eight years now in 3rd of June. Wow. Together We're... for around 12 years, I think. 3rd of June. That's a powerful, it's a powerful date. Yeah. June 3rd. That's when she proposed, proposed me. She proposed <laughs> to you? Did, yes. So I took him on the beach. And I said that I want to ask you something. And I asked him, do you want to be my boyfriend? 
Did I ask like that? Did eight years that? ago? It says eight yes, years yeah. ago. Yes. Yeah. She asked you, do you want to be my boyfriend? Well, you... yeah. <laughs> you don't have a choice. I can see it on your face. What are you going to say? No. I, I asked Morgan to marry me a, a hunt, literally a hundred times from the time I met her. When I met her, we, you know, it'd be a year and a half before we'd even see each other. But I used to tell her all the time, let's make a commitment. <laughs> no one has to know. I mean, I just, I just want to, nope, nope, nope. And then one day she came here in 2018 is the second time she came. She walked in the kitchen and she said, Hey, we're getting married. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys met eight years ago. Uh, now, were you both reawoken or awakened at the time you met? No. Do you no. feel? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wow. So we had the whole journey of being uh, unaware of life and then being initiated by each other. Wow. And then being apart for half a year because it was just such a roller coaster we couldn't really make anything out of it. It was just too much for both of us. And then we separated for some time. And then we now got was, back. And so now this was, okay, so eight years ago, you say, hey, you want to be my boyfriend? He says, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you start a life together, and then you had to separate for a while. How long did you have to separate? For half a year. Oh, for half a year. Okay. Yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, we moved in basically quite soon. When we got in together. August, yeah. And then year after that, we moved to Australia. Mm. We lived there for over three years. And wow. then a lot of things happened there. Super, super high energy place yeah. to be. If you want to evolve spiritually, then just go visit Australia. And for both of us, it was a huge deal. We started to experiment on different psychedelics there and it was like a whole spaceship journey for both of us wow and we're gonna we're gonna have to dig into that what part of australia were you in all over mostly in sydney <clears throat> sydney first in perth yeah wow yeah. okay yeah i think you're right because like in uh we have we have what one two three four we have like five or six different platforms and Every now and then I'll add them all up and, you know, with the, with the metrics and the statistics and the demographics. And, uh, it's, it's interesting because of the, let's say of the top 10, uh, areas, maybe 10 or 12, uh, five of them are Australian. And if you look at the percentage of Australians in the Sology network, which is, Hard numbers like 111,000, and uh, I would say they're like, you know, the third country. So they're, but they're not a lot. They're like say six percent or seven percent. Yet, if you look at the individual areas, like Sydney and the surrounding area, I think that's probably like third, third in Sology. But the top five, or five of the top ten, are Australian cities. So you guys meet in Sedonia, and you're a modern woman. So you ask him, "Do you want to be my boyfriend?" <laughs> you're yeah. not. You're not technically awake, and and you come together. Did you guys have the aha moments, the awakening moments together? Did you wake up one day and say, uh, "The world's not what it we think it is, and we've got more work to do, or we've got stuff we got to do"? Did Did you get any kind of message like that? Not like that, yeah. you know. Actually, if you ask ask if we if we were aware, then I think we were in a sense that we understood how who is owning the money in the world, you know, yeah, yeah. government stuff, and and you know, yeah. we were both um, aware of, you know, we would like to live somewhere countryside, you know, outside of the system. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what you mean by by awake or having these experiences. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh yeah, I think for most people the first part of it is you know, like 9/11, I think woke a lot of people up, but then, you know, as the years went on and got to 2012, more and more stuff was becoming obvious, but I think for most people the conspiracy or the disclosure topics are kind of the first step. 
And then the next step would be, um, you know, I'm just basing this on all the shows we've done, but it would be like, uh, hey, I'm more than a human being uh, or somebody's talking to me or why do these things keep happening? Like meeting a beautiful girl and then she asked me at the beach if I want to be her boyfriend, you know. But but many of the couples, um, they they do work together, I guess as you, you would put it that way. Whether they realize it or not all the time, but like you going to Australia sounds like that was a big deal. How long after y'all met did you go to Australia? After a year. Mm -hmm. A year? Okay. Yeah. Did that did that include the uh, six months apart, or did that come later? That came later, yeah. It came later. After we came back. After yeah. came back from Australia to Estonia, then we were here. Um, was it a not, year, not, year and a half? A year it? and a half, yeah. And then we separated. So. so we yeah. No, I was just going to say, I you know, a lot of people can't understand. Uh, oh my God! Please don't look at me. <laughs> every time i glance over there i'm like oh my god um a lot of people wouldn't understand because their understanding of these couples that are popping up all over the world these new relationships uh they require time apart and all this weird stuff that didn't happen in the old relationships but uh they probably wouldn't understand uh you know once you proposed to him on the beach and he said yes you know their understanding or, or their perception is that everything's perfect from that point forward. And all you do is make each other feel good all the time. And there's nothing but smiles and happiness. <laughs> no, it's not how that works. <laughs> no, it's, it's deep, deep initiations and really allowing each other to be who we are, not owning each other. Yeah. And really understanding, and we actually often speak that about uh, being apart. We feel it's necessary so that we are sober-headed, that yeah. we don't get these intense feelings. Um, like where you want to kill, like where you want to kill them. <laughs> yeah. We don't actually have that. No, yeah, we, we don't have that. There. Yeah. We've never so, had. A yeah. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Uh, so, how does a couple? And I'm sorry, this is not a normal interview. I don't know if you're familiar with the show. But you're welcome to ask questions as well. I, obviously, I'm in a relationship and have been for almost seven years. Um, so, yeah, anything. It's just a conversation between new friends. But um, so that's a, that's a really, I think, a really uh, interesting point or something we could talk about for a second. Because there is a lot of misconceptions about these new relationships. Everybody wants a twin flame or a soulmate or a divine partner and they think as soon as they meet them that everything is just going to be perfect like you've ascended <laughs> uh, when actually it's more of a catalyst or a I don't want to say a compliment because it sounds too easy <laughs> but more like a, 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 a static electricity catalyst kind of weird crazy magnetic electric thing that that uh, actually propels you an individual into their own um ascension but it's how how does a couple experience never having uh, a fight and yet and and then of course you know being together and then going to australia for three years come back and then figure out hey we're going to have to take some time apart how did y'all get to that point okay <laughs> do you want to share or i'll share you can start. You're good. Okay. With, you're good. Good with story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Especially with our story. <laughs> yes, I've told this many times. Actually, it seems like it helps people in a way to understand exactly the point that you made. That uh, it's it's not easy, and it's it's basically when you're together with the person, and you really come from a place of love and acceptance, then uh, it's just dying from there on <laughs> dying every day yeah. <laughs> but yeah. in a in a good way yeah. Ready to die, Ready at least, to die, yeah. so how it happened um we moved to a house in sydney uh the house number was 39 
so a karmic number and i understood straight away uh oh something's gonna happen in this house so i got the whole room for myself in that house it was a huge house so i started doing um my meditations and my dances in my own room there every night i would have two or three hours for myself and actually for me now i understand that it was this woman in me was waking up very mm. and i was dancing to myself in the mirror and and really getting to know my body and what i like and what i don't like and and really journaling a lot and taking this time for myself to try to understand who is this new woman who's trying to be being born underneath me. And, um, and then this basically initiated uh, this waking up in a relationship, as I understand it. So one night we were experimenting with psychedelics again, we were in the forest and we walked there uh, and I had the feeling that we need to go to a certain rock where there's this river flowing next to the rock and there's this mud has a message for us. And then Raimo and one of our friends was with us then as well, said, just Janna, you follow, follow this message, you know where it is. And I just kept on going in the dark and found this rock. And we stood on the rock and I felt, okay, this is the place. And I had the feeling that night that something big is going to happen. Like I was, I was shaking and I was sweating a lot. It was super bizarre. I remember that. And then at one moment, Raimo came to me and said, can you step aside? I have something to tell you. And then we both stood, um, faced each other very close. And he told me, I haven't been honest with you. And I said, what do you mean? And he said that he had been with three other women while we were together. And my reaction in that point was just hands on my heart. And I said, wow, you have kept this inside, your, inside of yourself, this pain for so long. Like what a, what, a, what a courage to tell me this right now. And I just had pure compassion and love and, and forgiveness in me for wow. him in that point. And just <clears throat> no judgment whatsoever. So the evening continued, but I felt the shift. I really felt energetic shift, like I was here and he was there and there was no connection, just in two totally different worlds. And next morning when I woke up, for me, everything was changed. Like I remembered who this Janne was and what she liked and what she didn't like and what worked and, and you know, what not, but nothing worked anymore. So it was like this memory of this Janne was still there. I could understand it, but I couldn't use this memory. I was like a baby in, in this memory of Janna. It was super bizarre. I didn't understand what was going on with me. And that was like, there was no chemistry between us after that night whatsoever. And I was actually super, super depressed. I thought about taking my life because it was so intense. I didn't understand. No one understood me. And I, I said to myself at one point, even to my best friend, then that uh, I don't love myself. And that scared, scared me so much. How could I say this to myself? I don't love myself. And then I seek for help. I went to one woman who put me under uh, hypnosis. And then she looked at me and said, well, your soul is basically hanging above your body, only with a very thin rope. So you had near death experience and now I'm going, going to put your soul back inside of your body so you can experience this human life again. So basically it was a shock during that night, but I wasn't aware of it then. So it was, I think, a couple of months passed after that experience in the forest where I would just try to get myself back on my feet, but nothing worked. <clears throat> and, and this woman said to me that we're going to break up. That, you know, he's this type of man who cheats and blah, blah, blah. But I understood that it came from her experience, her own ego. Right. I didn't really believe her. So right. she even put me under hypnosis and said, you know, uh, imagine infinity and put Raimo inside one infinity bubble and you inside the other. And now take the scissors and cut. But her hypno hypnosis didn't work on me. So I didn't cut it. I said to myself, I am the creator of my yeah. own relationship and my realities. So I'm not going to allow other person tell me what to do. 
if it really is as she says, then I'm going to just see for myself and we're going to figure it out ourselves. Yeah. And then I went home. I said to Raimo that this woman said that uh, we're going to break up because I left from that place uh, very clear. I was like super, super clear, like no thoughts, just I felt uh, a pull to certain direction. Something in me was pulling me, but I didn't know where. So, and then we cried on the on the sofa there in our home, said, okay, like if we're going to break up, do you want to add something? No, we just cried a lot, not, not only that night, the night before. And, mm-hmm. yeah. It's making me cry. sick. <laughs> it's making me want to cry. <laughs> But yeah, it's par- it's powerful though. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we did cry a lot. Yes, yeah. it was like I think both of us felt inside that something big is gonna happen. That we we have to deattach some way, and it's mm-hmm. gonna drive so far apart. And this was both of our fears, because the different challenges we have had in life have been very similar. Actually, like the core wounds are the same. Yeah. So, so it was like we are we were clinging on to each other, and it was comfortable to be this way. But right. then after night, life said, "Okay, this is your initiation. Now you need to de-attach and and try to get to know each other from a totally different angle." And, and get to know ourselves as well. Yeah, ourselves as well. Yes, yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. And then, yeah, we we basically said that if we're gonna break up, then we're gonna break up. And, you know, what, what can we do? If, if life asks this from us, then, you know, who are we to say? Who are we to fight? It's going to only hurt us even more. And then we went outside. We said, let's go, going to go for a run. We went into the park and just were sprinting back and forth and just trying to burn all this energy because it was mm-hmm. had been super intense for mm-hmm. many months. Yeah. And we were laughing. Like, we have this thing. If things get tip- difficult, then we do 10 squats with quack. So quack, Quacks. quack. <laughs> you two yeah, are just, definitely, you're definitely made for each other. I don't know if you could find anyone else in the world to do that with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> um, God, there's so much, so much yeah. said in what you're saying. Uh, it's really remarkable. F- first of all, uh, you know, it's funny how, how these things are happening in sequence now. Everything is related to what just happened yesterday or a few minutes ago. So I had gotten this thing a couple of days ago, and I didn't understand it. And I just now understand it at a different level because of your story. And I was told, uh, I was told the only thing that you'll never know is is what the the silence, you know, the void, the silence doesn't tell you. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? The only thing I don't know is what the silence doesn't tell me. I get go into the silence so I can hear, but you're telling me that the silence doesn't hear. And what I got from that was there's always an unknown aspect to our experience. Like right up to the point, like as an example, like the lady telling you, you're not going to be together, right? You still have free will. You still have creator abilities that you know that with your heart aligned, <clears throat> you can achieve anything. Uh, of course, when it involves another person, then it becomes a little bit more complicated. But still, I'm listening to you and I'm understanding something because I had a very similar experience to to your experience uh, last year. And uh and basically, that unknown quantity is what decision we make with whatever we've embodied. And I love your story because uh, you you uh, declared your desire from the heart. Like you didn't just shut the door and say, I'm done. You said, I know that this lady's telling me this. I know that that's uh, somewhat uh, <clears throat> diminished because it's coming from her experience and, and let's say her ego or whatever or her impression. Uh, yet I'm I'm not saying yes or no. I'm going to go back and spend some time with them and whatever we do, we do together. I think this is this is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like like yeah. Uh, you Just- know. 
Yeah. It's powerful. And that's what I told her when she came back. Like, um, if we have to break up, then let that be our decision, not someone third party or someone else from Bondi Beach, um, which telling you something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, and sometimes it's not a fortune teller or a healer or a practitioner or a hypnotist telling you. There's just a lot of signs that are coming in for everybody, and we don't, you know, it's still, whether it's a person or whatever, however form it comes in, we still own our energy. And, yeah, we still own our energy. I mean, we 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 got the message, you know, just to put it, you know, you know, bluntly last year that Morgan had to go back to Australia. And then we had, of course, same type of thing. You're having this this physical separation, but it's also an opportunity to 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 uh, um, power up mm -hmm. and i had those conversations with uh with the universe like i see these signs and it looks like this but i'll be damned <laughs> if i'm giving up on this you know i mean i think that's what that transmission was a couple of days ago it's what do you want what do you want because there's something as good or better for you from where you stand with that person, with another person, with, with that location or another location. But yeah, I love the way that, uh, so that was how long ago? A couple years ago? That was 2018. 18? October. I remember it well, yes. October 2018. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and so then, so then you guys came together and you decided, hey, let's split up for. No, the. Uh... A whole <clears throat> new journey of my personal torture by myself to myself for the next one and a half years actually because I kind of sensed that I would need time apart but I was so afraid to let this relationship go I was so afraid that I would lose him so my abandonment would play out big time during that time and then all my father issues came out who, you know, also uh, left me when I was very young. And, and then Raimo played this role for me, this wound it reflected it back to me. So I kind of saw that it needs to go that way if we want to be together from a very pure right. heart place. <clears throat> so I was afraid for the next one and a half years. So we would... Um, was it one and a half years? Actually, it wasn't. It was. It was way less. So it was 2018, and then we, we. Uh, it was less than a year, I think. Yeah, actually. it was actually half half a year. I think we came in May and we split up in January. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and you yeah. split up for six. You split up for six months. Were, were we all still in contact every day? Almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We had. We had. Um, breakfast next next day it was beautiful oh my yeah. this this new level of relating to each other when we yeah. weren't in a in a relationship container it was so beautiful right it, it was just pure allowance yeah you know allowed each other to be who we were and there weren't any you know asking like where are you going today or what yeah. are your plans right. for the week there was no this just no mumbling around it was just yeah. very direct heart-to-heart -heart conversations very present dialogues um, very detailed noticing of of how both of us would maneuver in life and it was just pure appreciation from both of us right. yeah. well there's a, a fairly common saying in these communities that it's never them it's always me and listening and people, you know, ask us, ask me, ask us, uh, and I'm sure they ask you, you know, how do I find my partner or, you know, da, 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 all that stuff. And, and again, a lot of the uh, it's an externalization because a lot of of um, I guess the understanding of the person is and then they find somebody and they get excited and they think it's all just going to be perfect. You know, so they say, like, what is the 
greatest attribute uh, of the relationship. And I would have never said this two or three years ago, but over the last year, it's, it's being able to observe my own shadow in something that seemingly looks separate from me, but she's not. So there's like this thing of oneness. You think it's going to be like, oh, you know, bells and whistles and candles and and but it's not it's it's an opportunity to to go deep within yourself and this is what i'm hearing in your story yeah like yeah. you it, but you still stay connected while you're separated physically but and and i guess sharing with each other your challenges and and so on and not not so much projecting on the other or did you have some of that we didn't we haven't actually yeah. really projected like ever no, anything one yeah, to each other really. we we mostly have had just those attachment wounds mm -hmm. you know we would be so attached like we would eat cake and then both of us would want to give each other the last spoon and then we would be like who will get the last spoon so yeah. these were like our things we would give so much to each other so that we would be like empty only the other only the other only the other so the shift in our relationship was like point your attention towards yourself and then yeah. see if from there yeah yeah that's but, uh, powerful yeah but the separation came from it was so bizarre it was new year's eve so so raimo was with his friends i was with my friends and then raimo sent me a video of uh, fireworks and i actually he didn't write it but i understood it in a way that let's uh, i hope our next 10 years will be like this and then i couldn't write him back like i tried for one and a half hours i couldn't text him back i hope so too and then i observed this in myself why can't i why can't i write it back what's going on and then went to my friend's place and i asked uh, one of those angel cards from her and i said i really need to ask something can you give me the cards and she looked dead straight into my eyes and said, I'm going to give you these cards in Estonian so you don't mix in translation. And then I asked, what do I see right now in our relationship? What do I need to see? And then the card said, let go. Let go of the relationship which doesn't fulfill you 100%. And then I just started crying and I, I it actually dropped into me that this realization that I have to do it. I, I yeah. have to, I have to let go, you know, because I noticed cer certain things, which I would sometimes laugh when people would say, you know, oh, my partner left their socks there or doesn't wash their clothes or something. And I would be like, who, who is doing that? Like, why, why do you nag, nag on these things? It's super bizarre to me always. Yeah. And then I noticed in myself doing these things. Uh -huh. and, and then I saw, actually, it's not him who is doing them, but I do not want to take responsibility over this decision of breaking up. So I'm finding ways um, to project this on him so that he would break up with me. Yeah. Wow. And then That's yeah, the first of January, we both came home, sat on the sofa and I, I said to him that just, I was so clear, so clear, like no emotions whatsoever. And then I said to him, mm, would like to love you free yeah what? and she what? said i would like to love you that i want to love you free yeah not with attachments yeah and then that uh, i think we need time apart mm -hmm. or something like this mm -hmm. <sighs> that's yeah. heavy thank you for sharing this this is this is so important we think all the code is going to be light language and nothing wrong with light language but yeah. we think all the code is is uh coming from these other multidimensional aspects and, and, and the real codes coming from the human. Mm -hmm. uh, but, it, but I think there's, there's a, uh, you know, there's a pretty large misconception out there about these um, couples. You know, when you were talking earlier, Morgan put up a quote, these relationships have to die over and over and over again. Each reset <laughs> brings a new level of love or I should say, uh, or, or, and, or jumps to a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, that's really deep, you know, what you're talking about. Mm 
and, and it really hits the heart. But I think the misconception is that, you know, like we've heard the same thing many times. We've been laying next to each other, connecting before we go to bed many times. And it hasn't been lately, though. <laughs> but anyway, and, and it'll be presented, do you want to you know, raise your vibration? Do you want to uh, raise your frequency? And so we'll say yes. And then the, and then, and then uh, we'll be presented with, well, then let go of the other one. Like in this moment, just let it go. And, you know, and then of course there's a lift afterwards, but it doesn't feel like it all the time. Right. It's like, oh, my God, like, especially if we're alone and we hear, you know, and, and you and let her go, let him go. But I think what we've come to understand, and maybe you can add to this, but um, you're not really letting go. You can't really let go of anything because we're all one kind of thing. But it's the letting go and the dying off of the parts of the relationship template that are based in duality. The parts that say, hey, why'd you leave your socks on the floor or hair on the soap or whatever the case is, it's it's separating from that. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard on the human. It is. It is it's yeah. tough work. It's mm -hmm. tough work. Like, I, I'm not surprised by so many people when they find uh, other half like this, that they uh -huh. will. They run away because it's scary everything you are afraid of comes looking at you straight in your eyes yeah and it, they're like you trust your heart it's it's for me it has been really a test of the heart yeah. do you love or do you play in the games yeah what do you choose the choice and i need to basically every day ask this from myself what do i choose what do i choose i choose the heart what does my heart feel what right. is the truth of my heart? Yeah, it is like that. Yeah, it's it's very difficult. It no, I know. I've been there. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it. But, but you're right. It, the, it, the thing is, is like the heart. It it it's, first of all, it doesn't lie. So here you can have this um, physical separation, or you can have a whatever it is. Uh, you know, we're going to take some time apart. But the heart doesn't diminish. So it's a weird feeling because you're like, why am I doing these things that don't fall in line with conventional wisdom when it comes to relationships? But my heart's just growing. Mm -hmm. It's we it's a weird thing. Yeah. Like my mom said when we when we separated, my mom said, You two are so stupid. You're so stupid, you don't know what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Like you will get back together, you were just having this weird time. And I tried to make her understand no it's not about that not at all so i'm not sure if she actually uh, understands right now what yeah. what we like i tried to tell her that this is just deepening and what we both understood with Raimo was that when we were apart then this love was so much stronger so yeah, much stronger true. without the attachments and i said to even i said yesterday to you that I'm I'm falling in love with him like every day more and more. It's super yeah. bizarre. Like, I can relate just, to that. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah, I can relate to that big time. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy because, you know, well, I guess nothing remains the same. But I mean, like, like some of the uh, impressions I've had of that, what you're talking about, have, have uh, become more frequent while we've been apart it is like daily it is like daily and and it's like you reach this field of consciousness or telepathy or something where no matter what i say i can't say it and i'm somewhat of a poet and a, and a songwriter and i can put words to good use but even trying to do that it's not an easy thing to describe what you're talking about which to me makes a lot of sense because how are you going to find oneness with everyone in the world if you can't find it first with the one that you're with, right? Mm -hmm. It's a whole different kind of uh, 
what? It's a whole different kind of like outer space of love of the heart. It is. And maybe you can also agree or, or what are your thoughts or, or um, viewings on, on this, that, uh, that the love between you and Morgan is just big, huge, huge, huge love, but it's not attached to mm. that one person, this love for everyone. <clears throat> like when you open yourself up to it, then you just love everyone like this. And I had a, a big time letting go of, you know, not, I tried to suppress this love in me because I was thinking that it's wrong to love another man this way, have this strong love for them. You know, my commitment is Raimo, but still this love is for everyone. Mm -hmm. so I had to really dig deep into my heart and try to understand that, no, this is just this universal love. This is who we are. We, we love everyone. It's not attached to one person. Yeah. yeah. Have to learn how to love. Mm -hmm. Let love yeah well i mean again going back to the uh it's never them it's always me these partners you know or however you want to put this these relationships it's it's such a uh you know i can say well she stands there and i stand here you know and then it's no matter what happens it's all it's all being experienced or presented for myself no matter what, no matter, no matter what comes from the other person or what I might do, this is all about me. And I think that uh, ultimately that love um, is a love of self that <laughs> comes through this opportunity with this other person who happens to be a big glaring mirror in front of your face. And if you can hold to that, it's never them, it's always me. There seems to be, that seems to be the way. I yes. mean, th that's been my experience. Yeah. I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And it just reminded me of this experience in Australia where I got lost over the night. Uh, it was basically just me learning to love myself. I remember I was on the bus and I bought myself three roses. And I was sitting there, the bus was full of people and I was crying to myself and was sniffing the roses. And I said to myself, thank you so much. Thank you for buying these flowers and these, these tiny little steps of acknowledging myself and really taking the time and measures to pamper myself when I'm in deep despair or, or depression yeah. or whatever what was going on. So it's, it's in the relationship this way as well. Like if I leave myself behind, if I'm trying to um, plan my day according to how Raimo is planning his day, then it's just going to be all muddy, not right. fun. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, yeah. we see yeah. that it would be better if, uh, if both of us just direct our attention to what we are experiencing yeah. on a personal level, and then we meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah, exactly. But Naturally, yes. Yeah. Like metaphorically, like, hey, you plan your day, I'll plan my day. Mm -hmm. What are you doing today? What are you doing today? And hey, mm -hmm. we might see in two, three hours or, you know, looks like looks like we're both free later in the day or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Instead of instead of uh, doing what a lot of empaths have done, which is really all of us, which is over giving and depleting my energy in order to to serve the person I love, which sounds great, but like you said, if you leave your, any of yourself behind, then the the you're not whole, and if you're not whole, the relationship's not whole. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that comes out in in um, your words, the both of you, is it's very much what is it now, not what was it. <laughs> you know what I mean. I mean, what, yeah. what, what it was is, is great. That's a part of our makeup, but what is it right now? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, like, what is it right now? What, because this is what we have right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be with you. Let's build a life together. Let's work mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. um, and to actually uh, take those steps or whatever, whatever steps, you know, to support the mutual decision. Yeah. And also, what was five minutes ago, it's not right now here anymore. Exactly, exactly. 
Yeah. I was hearing a few weeks ago and it wasn't just to the relationship or it was just the whole thing, right? Like a couple of months ago. And it was all about, I spent a whole day just hearing this all day long. Uh, let it go and see what happens. And so, you know, again, apply it to every aspect is, is the way I was getting throughout my day. But then I, then I was looking at it in terms of relationships, which let what go? Well, again, let go of those pieces that aren't, that are dualistic based, uh, that you're externalizing on another person and just take it within yourself and then make a choice. Hey, I can accept the shadow that I'm looking at because I know ultimately it's mine. (laughs) (laughs) And I want to go on. I want to keep going, you know. I mean, it's, it's a lot like what your description is of the rock you know, being at the river, everything energetically being put on the table, and then, and then going to see this practitioner, and then getting a, a, a fortune that you're going to break up. But each time you make a decision, not out of attachment, but but out of true heartfelt desire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listening to your heart, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. And I was actually so disconnected from my heart at one point when we were apart, actually that I really liked being alone. I really, really did. And I thought I'm going to be alone probably for the rest of my life. But then right. he was just there with his big heart. And then I started to ask myself these questions like, do I really want to be alone? You know, you know why, why is this beautiful presence here with me? Like there, there must be reason for that. But I was playing these games with my mind then. Right, right. Then... Raimo really wanted to do magic mushrooms with me before he went for a 800 kilometer hike. And he was like his big wish, like I, we really need to do mushrooms before I go. Like he went for a month. So I said, of, co- of course, like when, uh, when it's our job to do, then, you know, these mushrooms will come to us. And then I think it was two days before before the hike, yeah. before the hike we got the mushrooms. They were not there before. So... We got lucky on that. So the life was... was and we were separated at that time. We were separated, yes. Yeah. So, officially. So we were um, camping outside and we put those mushrooms into orange juice. And it was in the middle of the day. Then we charged them with the sun rays and we were breathing together. And we said, uh, please, mushrooms, dissolve any illusions between us. And that was like our wish. And we looked deep into each other's eyes and just breathed and just felt into it and drank it. And then soon after that, Raimo was in the tent, just going full blown Kundalini awakening, being in orgasmic bliss in the heights somewhere, just moaning in the tent. And then I looked at him, I was like, no, but we were supposed to like trip together. And what's going to happen now? Okay, I'm going to have this trip all by myself. And then something in me told me, Janna, you're just whinging. You're just whinging. Stop whining. Lay down. Close your eyes. Go into yourself. I said, okay. Noted. I laid down. And then this beautiful song came from the playlist. And I felt very teary. Like a lot of emotions were bubbling up. And then I looked at him. He had his eyes open and also his eyes were watering. And then he just opened his arms and I snuggled into him and just no words, um, just pure telepathy, pure love. We were just crying for many hours, just pure realization. All the illusions were gone. All the mind fed weird things were just gone in that moment. And from that day on, I still, when I'm struggling with love at times, when I don't see it, then I say to myself, you may remember this time when there were no illusions. You know it. You know <clears> this <throat> feeling. feeling is always here. You are just denying yourself from feeling it. Just soften into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think wow. that, that, like uh, without words. We yeah. came we came back together. Yes. We we have never said it. Yeah. But it was really just, true. Yeah. yeah. Like this yeah. this night was the decision. Life made it for us. Yeah. Well, the, the heart can't be denied. I mean, no. it's like there's that unknown thing again. 
It's yeah. not like what what we don't know that's out to get us. It's more like what we don't know by the power that that's in us, especially when there's two or more people. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's like setting goals or I don't really go there anymore because I know that the universe, which is me, the universe, knows what I want. <laughs> so it's more of a, uh, to me, like what you're talking about. It's more of a self dialogue, keeping yourself, you know, out of those loops of the wind gene and, and all that stuff and just keeping clear and open and then sharing what you are moved to share with your partner. Um, yeah, this is like, uh, so, so, you know, anytime, <laughs> anytime we have couples on here, I always have to ask them about sacred sexuality, but I don't mean that in a, like details, intimate details, but a lot of people that are in these types of potentials, uh, with these types of relationships, um, it's powerful. It's powerful enough getting downloads as an individual and, and, and having to deal with all the energy that's bombarding the earth. But, um, so like a lot of couples talk about when they're in the frequency of what you just said, you know, pure, pure, uh, transparency, pure open hearts, you know, they can be holding hands, they can be making love, they can be having lunch, whatever, that it opens up, uh, a wider band of frequencies or intelligence or dimensions and some of them report, you know, visitations or mutual hallucinogenic experiences without any plant medicine or just all kinds of different stuff or even higher levels of ecstasy and elation. Uh, have you guys experienced anything like that when you just that where you can look at it and go, you know what, this is happening because of the connection that we have created. Do you see anything like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, a lot, all the time. But yeah. it started happening when we were apart. Yeah. So the attachment was a huge theme in that. Did, was any of that like with the light bodies? Did you are you sensitive or have a feeling at all that your other bodies are coming together and having all the fun while you're separate? <laughs> I yeah yeah definitely yeah. energy bodies oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Sometimes it feels like we don't do anything. Right. It's just energies are dancing. Right. And we we could just lay next to each other and just be in orgasmic bliss bliss or very yeah. high state of consciousness. Exactly. Yeah. It happens a lot. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now, now we don't even we don't even experience intimacy the way we used to. Like, it just doesn't happen. Like, this energy pulls us together exactly when it's supposed to happen. And yeah. how it's supposed to happen, <clears throat> but it, it's not the way it, it used to be. Yes. Not I at do. all. It's just, it feels like, if it is like that, then it feels like it's just misalignment. Yeah. Or something off, or, or we are trying to do something, or it just doesn't work. Yeah. So we're not, yeah, we're not present yet. Exactly. It's more of like a stress reliever or some type of uh, <clears throat> distraction, a distraction or a Band-Aid over something. But yeah, because like what you described on the um, on the plant medicine, like that moment when he opened his heart and you just fell into his heart and, and you just held each other. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It's and, and I think that's another thing that, you know, uh, a lot of people obviously approach us over the years and you know Morgan's really the practitioner but um one of the things that and I think I just had this conversation with somebody uh just the relationship can go celibate for a while you know it can it can have a a, an air of what uh cleansing or celibacy and then you go into it and it's a whole different experience and it doesn't look anything like what it used to, unless 
I guess you could take a snapshot and it might look similar, but if you took a video, it's not the same thing. We're not talking about sex here. We're talking about sacred sexuality. So, yeah. I have to, of the word uh, merging. Yes, that's exactly what it is, merging. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you consciously merge together or does it just happen naturally or both? Both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. It's like this energy just calls us, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, I can so, we can re- we can relate to that. We we had a couple of uh we've had a lot of experiences, but we had some really extraordinary experiences in Hawaii. We lived in Hawaii for a short period of time and uh and I remember after the first one, <laughs> we were like, "Holy crap." You know? Like, you know, you got like a four hour episode and, and you know, you're, you're like you're 15 years old or something. I mean, like, you know, just crazy. And so you and then the, the next night we're like, hey, let's go. <laughs> let's try to do this again. And you can't do it. Like you said, it only happens when you're called or when I guess when the the field of sacred sexuality is 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 firmly um, established in that moment or whatever. And everything's clear. Right. It's just love. Yeah. It's just love. Yeah. Very well said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Far out. This is, this is. Yeah. There's no need for sure. No need for what? There's no need behind it. Behind exactly. That. Exactly. There doesn't have to be an orgasm. There doesn't have to be, did I satisfy her? Or, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, uh, you know, like a set, uh, what a set sequence you know so many people i've talked to and actually came to this like talking to morgan over the years that she'd be like why do you do this and why do you do that and you start to think about it you know i guess as a for women it'd be the same thing but you know well we do this then we do that then we do this then we do that then we're done (laughs) like like what are we doing we touching all the bases on a baseball field or what you know this is but then to find uh erogenous zones or portals in parts of her body that are we wouldn't consider you know like the 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 small of her back or putting your hand on her back or touching her shoulder and all of a sudden you know you're having soulgasms like what the hell is going on here but i'm sure you can relate to that yeah yeah, it's very very beautiful so there's so many different uh well, you know, all the experiences are unique. And then these relationships make it um, multidimensionally uh, broader. So in other words, I'm an individual, she's an individual, but somehow or another in this weird new science and math, together we're also a pillar in that triad, right? In that, I mean, that is an entity, that that energetic uh, baby or whatever you want to call it that we create is an active part of this relationship. So it becomes a little bit different. It's like you have to look through three sets of eyes instead of two, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, do is So is this like a lifestyle for you? Do you guys do work together? Do you, are you, are you um, like consciously uh, focusing on, on, um, let's just say your vocations or your passions are they separate? Do they are they separate somewhat and come together sometimes? I mean, do you feel like you're doing work together beyond the relationship and what it offers the world? This I've been trying to understand it. Like I have this feeling that uh, our, our our relationship is here to show something. Right. Just one, but we don't co- consciously teach anything, or right. like we have shared our story to people, and people are just in tears. It touches them. Yes. Give, gives them a sense of something, um, but we don't consciously uh, work together this way. Yeah. It's more organic and natural. Sounds yeah. Like. yeah. 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 So. When you go places, have you noticed, do people notice you? Like your illumination, like your frequency, yeah, I bet. Definitely. Yeah. 
person up there. They're like, I want some of that. <laughs> yeah, they, everyone says, oh, you were just the cutest couple. Or <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to hear our story. I think it shines through like the, the, the realness and the honesty we have for each other. And yeah. like honesty for ourselves, you know, really respecting yeah. uh, our hearts and each other and committing to to love. Not all yes. the other is it's yeah. what people see. And it's it's not a lot seen around actually. There's still a lot of duality games going on. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think that's what we do show is, is that like pure love. Mm-hmm. Love without conditions and just just with our presence. Yeah. Returning. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what we notice is it's cause sometimes it's just like, you know, especially during, you know, like last year or early this year, because all the energies were crazy. Everybody was losing their mind. Uh, so in a relationship, it, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in this transition we call ascension. But we always, we always return to love, right? Like no matter what, no matter what has happened, no matter how you feel while it's happening and no matter what ends up happening, we go back to love. And it sounds like, you know, oh, that's simple, you know, or, or whatever, but um, it's not because each time it's, it's a newfound level of love that's in itself mind blowing, uh, that comes from that, uh, like you said, that, uh, detachment from the parts of the relationship or myself or her or whatever that are, that are not real. Mm-hmm. They're just the patterns of this realm, you know, with the conditioning we've had. Yeah. Sometimes we think like, how much more deeper can the love go? Like it's already yeah. so yeah, just mind blowing. Yeah, like I had to. Does yeah. it go? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? It broke up. Like I said, that just one. We just wonder where, where will this love go? Like how much more deeper does it go? Hell yeah! I'm thinking <laughs> unicorns and and uh, castles and. Rainbows and whatever, yeah. magic <laughs> mushrooms, magic mushroom farm, whatever. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you're right. I would. I just had this last night. I haven't even talked to Morgan today, but but you know, a lot of obviously a lot of stuff is coming in for a lot of people right now, and uh, that was one of the things that that I went to last night was, wow, like uh, almost like a, you guys did it again. You've you've reached another level again, which is great because you know you reach a higher level, but then you also know that you get you're back on that same. Well, let's do it again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't ever take your eye off the ball. No, someone said really beautifully that um, if you think it gets easier or slows down, then think again. Yeah, it's only gonna. If you learn the lesson, then it's a new one, new one, new one, and yeah. then you end learning them so fast that it's just continuous roller coaster. But yeah. the the difficulties are going to be easier because the the heart resonance already is so strong that yeah. it doesn't go over that much anymore. Yeah, I agree with that. I think what happens is it does move faster and faster. So as it moves faster and faster, you're accessing higher. Uh, faster moving frequency fields, right? If you look at it, like say quantumly or spirit scientifically. Um, so I think you said it earlier, like, so when these, when things present themselves, it can be very rapid. It can be very powerful, but it becomes easier to go, oh, that's, that's one of those things, or that's old or that's not part of this relationship anymore, or that's not part of me anymore, or I don't have that impression of my partner anymore. Uh, And you just, it's all, it's like a higher level of telepathy um, and intuition. And I guess oneness really, I don't know about y'all, but I, I, and I can't prove anything, but 
Oh, how am I going to say this? I feel like half of the cells in my body or maybe all the cells in my body are almost 50% merged with all the cells in her body. It's weird. It's yeah. like I can like sometimes, um, you know, there's certain things that I do well. There's certain things that she does well. And I've probably done this four or five times in the last few weeks. And I'll be like, I'm going to be Morgan. Like I can feel it in my body. I'm like, okay. And immediately I'm looking through her eyes and I'm thinking, cause it's, there's a task in front of me that she would be much better at. And so that's just a kind of a poor example. And then I'll just kind of put my Morgan hat on or step in Morgan's feet in her shoes. And, and then I go do what I got to do. And it feels very real. I know it sounds crazy, but I don't know. Do you feel like that there's, uh, you know, do you feel like at some physiological or physical level that you've, the energetics of your relationship are altering, let's just say, like your DNA or your or your body or your abilities, uh, where there's a relationship between the love that you have and the vision that you might have as an individual or your abilities or sensitivities, something like that? Firstly, I have to say, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but... Uh... I feel we are more like we understand each other without words. Or yeah. Like feel what what other what fears. other feel. Yeah. I can feel his thoughts. Yeah. Or if something sometimes is, even see it, see them. Sometimes I see his thoughts. Yeah. There was one crazy incident when we were talking about just something, and huh. then I looked at him and said, "You are thinking about pool. You're not." you're not here in this conversation. And I saw like this big bubble coming out from his head. And then, then I saw a pool table, he's playing pool. Then I saw this pool table and him playing uh -huh. uh, around the table. And I asked him, do you think about playing pool? And he said, yeah, I actually am thinking about playing pool. And then yeah. I was like, okay, okay. And I, sen I sense very, very detailly when he's not present. If he's thinking about other things or when we hug and he's He's thinking he's still somewhere like his, his somewhere energy else. is somewhere else. And I kind of like knock him and say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I, happens. That's what happens when you're uh, hooked up with a priestess psychic. <laughs> I figured that out. I figured that out in the very beginning. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to just come clean with everything here. There's nothing I can hide. I always yeah. make the joke. It's uh, you guys are a lot younger, but. We had a, a a TV show in the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, called Bewitched, where the lady was a witch and she was married to a mortal. <laughs> and so he would have to adjust to her, her, you know, her ways. I mean, I'm making a joke, but there's a lot of truth to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sometimes I feel like, um, like I, I see through him in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I don't want to see because yeah. I want to give him his space to evolve the way how he's called to. Yeah. It's it's like my place to learn again, like where am I in my heart if I, yeah. I put much attention to him. Yeah. Because even the breakup, I sensed it like long way before. Right. Like I had a feeling I he's he will be, his heart will, will be broken through me. Right. I sense even before so so like it's not it's not always fun to be psychic and, and sense these things exactly yeah it's not only fun and games yeah like with everything like with, especially with this relationship as well mm. that everybody think it's only roses and yeah bubble gum but yeah and then where comes in the part where I need to say I need to I need to trust my heart. My heart is saying right now that we need to break up. I don't know what's going to happen if we're ever gonna get back together, or you know, if one of us is gonna run away. You know, we will never speak. I don't know what's gonna happen. These these steps will never be laid in front of yeah. us. Yeah, just need to feel this. What's accurate in yeah. the moment? Just really trust it. It's really yeah, diving yeah. into the 
-hmm. See, that's that's what I was talking about earlier with the whole uh, what the silence doesn't tell you, uh, mm -hmm. because because you don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. because we haven't listened to our heart because we had too many programs. So that's the part I'm talking about when you make a choice with your free will to basically align with universal will, which is the heart energy. You don't know what's going to happen, but this isn't to be confused or the same thing as um, listening to all that other stuff. Oh, why did he do that? Or why did she do that? Or, you know, why am I not uh, the right person for her or abandonment or sabotage or all the other things that play out? Because we know where that leads. It's just more chaos and more more programs on top of programs. So do you feel like that? Um, I love what you said about you feel like that you're coming together has a purpose, you know, to be seen or heard or felt. You know, I mean, that's energetically speaking, that's that's I'm right there with you. I, I totally get that. Um, do you feel like it's getting easier and easier for your for your relationship? Uh, in terms of like navigating things, seeing things, talking about things, and and uh, is it becoming more fluid? I think definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think we're like mm -hmm. becoming wiser, mm -hmm. um, knowing ourselves as well more and yeah. more every day, yeah. and then making like more rational decisions not not um deciding on the emotions because we see them like beforehand now right but even before maybe mm -hmm. good point not not reacting to the not being dictated or led by the emotions or the fears yeah, yeah. now and, we're able to take a yeah. step back and look at the situation yeah. from from distance and then we can see it see it from yeah. the other end. and it Usually, it, it's it's not what it was yeah. when you take a step back. So I think we can say that it, it has become easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so much of what's going on in the last 10 years, you know, it's great. Everyone gets information. Some people channel. Some people transmit, you know. and uh, But uh, the, you know... We, you know, obviously, everyone's an individual, and then when you have a couple, it it's a, it's kind of like a as within without, right? Like I'm going to attract what I am. So there's there's a real um, interesting pattern to watch in the evolution of a couple. If I look at my own relationship and as an individual, they go hand in hand, and it's like uh, less needs to be said. Uh, more is understood. Uh, information comes in, like for all of us, and it can be quite burdensome. It can be a lot. Uh, and the human part of us can be the last part to really get it, right? So it's nice to be, yeah, so it's nice to be in that situation and be in a relationship like this because... I don't have to concern myself with my uh, imbalance or my, you know, being being kind of knocked askew. I can just be myself, I guess is what I'm saying, with myself and with my partner and vice versa. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you talked about earlier with the, like with the, at the rock, there was no judgment. It was just an open mm -hmm. heart. Which, yeah. It's like who... Who am I to say to him how he's supposed to be or live his life or or what his views are? It's just it's my choice to walk this path of life with him. So it's also my um, like I need to honor him in yeah. his way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Then I, then I can go like there's no attachment to like we there's no point fighting over things like this is for us it's really ridiculous we have never fought or like 
it's mm -hmm. it's very bizarre for us <laughs> yeah this world of, of nagging or yelling or saying mean things to each other yeah. it always comes down to like we both see that we have tension and we ask like do you need time apart do you need space or we ask each other what do you need like i'm pretty good i sometimes like disappear i yeah. said to him i'm gonna go for a day and then switch off my phone and usually <clears> with him like i sense that something is going on he's a bit distant and yeah. then i have learned to ask him like how do you need me to be is there anything i can do for you and then usually he says i just need space yeah back in the days i would go like what is wrong with him i don't know what's yeah. going on because i'm trying to fix you yeah, yeah because i feel these energies but i didn't understand what was going on yeah. and then i was sending them in my own body and it, it has been a learning point for me as well to differentiate what is his and you know what he's yes. experiencing. I'm yes. not you see and that's what makes it challenging because it's it's um um it's so it's a different dynamic than the old relationships. Mm -hmm. So, and and then I think the other thing, and I realize there's same sex couples, and and I also realize that everyone has a masculine and feminine. Uh, so, you know, without getting you know into over generalizations, but when you have the, you have two different paths. You know, and and this is something I watched for years with Morgan and I, like. I get that I don't have the the experience or the the wisdom from the experience of her journey as a female, right? You know, and and then vice versa. And so one of the things I noticed and you just brought this up, I think it's important to mention is so stereotypically <laughs> normally uh she no she's a woman, she's in touch with her emotions. She has a better relationship with her emotions because she's acknowledged her mo emotions. This is what one of the gifts that women have. And then over here, you have this masculine who doesn't even know he's not in touch with his emotions, right? Which really means that he doesn't have a lot of experience in the heart. He may have a natural, you know, open heart, but he's still, you know what I mean? So that's what I'm hearing from you, like coming together and, and, and not, and, and you're saying, in other words, you're saying to him, look, I can sense something in you, which is also very common. You know, the feminine tends to pick things up first and he might not even know what the hell's going on. Right. And all he can say is I just need some space. Uh, and, and so you can see a difference there. Like I can see a difference there, like in the old paradigm, you know, she would, what do you hear women say? He never talks to me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't tell me anything or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. But she was basically reacting to the template that we were both in. Now it's more of an open. You're saying, I love you. Uh, it's okay if you don't know what's wrong or, or I'm not going to say anything. Just what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. Which is basically the best thing you can do for yourself too, right? I mean... Uh -huh. Because you're sure. not, yeah, you're not getting caught up in, in a loop yeah. of, you know, like, why did he leave his socks there? Why did he leave his socks there? What is it, you know, and then get into why he doesn't respect me or, you know, you're actually just saying that's over there. Uh, it's just energy. You need space. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so beautiful that we have learned this in our relationship. Yeah. Like we had this typical relationship before, like yeah. we were or anything but but still we're we're not as aware as we are right now and it has been a so beautiful learning curve actually to get to know, get to know each other from a totally different angle it feels like like who we were a month ago are not here anymore it's changing all the time and, and we can't really hold on to any old ideas or memories of each other like we, we change so fast yeah so like every moment you just need to be fully open again to to receive that person to receive yourself again to receive yourself yeah i don't think that there i don't think that there could be a relationship in the last uh you know whatever 10 years that that came together even if it was for a short period of time 
that came together with this innate, you know, magne- uh, magnetics of, of just like, hey, I, 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 you know, you come together where these things didn't come up. So either yeah. either somebody ran or they stuck it, they came, you know, separate, come back, separate, come back. And uh, that I think that's part of what what's been offered the last 10 years. How deep do you want to go? How yeah. much do you actually love? How much faith do you have? Mm-hmm. Um, because people are doing crazy stuff all over the world, you know, leaving countries, leaving homes, leaving relationships. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. But it com- but it comes, you earn it. You you earn it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. How much you're willing to invest? Invest, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I have the word, but commit, I think. Yeah. Much yeah, it's I don't know if there's a word, is there? I think yeah. of like devotion, commitment, surrender. Uh, I can't ever come up with the right word. Yeah. I still see it as that whatever I heard the other day, which is uh, the only thing you don't know is what the silence doesn't tell you. Well, the silence to me is the void. So I feel like, you know, I take her hand and we jump through again, right? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. Reminds me the experience we had in Australia when, when I came back from that uh, seer, that woman, oh. and I sensed the way, and I said to Raimo that uh, I need to go. I don't know where, but I'm going to buy a one-way ticket to somewhere. Like, I really need to go. And Are you coming with me? And then that was his, his leap, him trusting what I was feeling and knowing that I would never do crazy things just out of an emotion. That right. it would come right. from from my heart, and he he really truly is just unconditionally loving, yeah. and that's that's a big thing to accept. Yes, and this can jump together. That's a, that's a good point, um, and like I said, the humans, the human aspect of us always is the last to know. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, that's like the last part to give up, it's like hanging on, right? But uh, yeah. yeah, you're right. And, and I think so much of what we receive as individuals and as a couple and whatever, you know, people talk about embodiment. I don't know of anything that you can embody more than love itself from a conscious standpoint. You know, it's like last year when she, I had already picked up on it. Because of, you know, like you're, what you're talking about, like we, you can feel the other person and we're living together. And she's like, I, I got to go back. And I never thought twice. I just said, love is free. Period. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no human excuse or, you know, rationale that could could um, validate controlling or constricting the energy of love. Right. And, and I'm so happy to have, be a part of that because because when at least my experience is when you really step in faith and trust which which is a beyond surrender which is a beyond detachment you always it always comes back like a hundredfold yeah for sure yeah, yeah. so beautiful yeah it is you guys are beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Yeah. How did you guys find us or how did we find you? Did do you know? So, so I have been following you for years. Oh really? Oh cool. And Morgan posted, or there was actually one couple on the show, and Morgan said, I don't know, maybe it was you, uh, mentioned that we need to have more couples on the show. Yeah. And then I, I felt the call and I wrote Morgan, but yeah. she for some reason, my message went into chunk. Okay, so I got you. Just rediscovered it. Oh, wow. So. Perfect. Yeah, because that was back, like, I think in November. Yeah. No, it's yeah. always good to have couples on, especially when you can sit here and talk to a couple, and they can be seen by, you know, by everybody, to understand, you know, it's the same. It's the same trip as a couple as it is with an individual, right? I mean, it, it's it's a 
it's a fucking grind sometimes, right? I mean, we all go through all these things. So, you know, it's such a beautiful, um, you know, what am I trying to say? Like the participation, the participation of polarity in a field of oneness within a physical relationship. That says a lot more than the few words that I use. But what I'm trying to say is like what you said, I'm not going to change them. Uh, you know, unconditional love is unconditional love. And and that's it. And yeah. so so this has been a huge thing for me and I'm sure you and others is 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 accepting all shadow or and in a sense, accepting if that's what you want to look at, accepting all shadow in yourself. Mm-hmm. Being open to the shadow you don't see in yourself. I mean, these are the gifts of of these relationships, in my opinion. Because you get this expansion, as you know, of love, but it doesn't come unless you're willing to be brutally honest with yourself. Yeah, exactly. And ultimately, that will that will carry over into your relationship. Yes. So you guys are like, uh, you guys should be like on a poster splattered all over the subways and train stations all over the world and airports. <laughs> such, a, such a beautiful frequency. <laughs> Well, maybe we can get together again in, in 2022 if you guys are up for it. Yes, we'd love yeah, to. Yeah, would really yeah. love to. Yeah, I'd love to get to know y'all better. And yeah. uh, are y'all planning on doing any traveling or are you going to stay there making love every day? <laughs> <laughs> We've been thinking about traveling. Yeah. There's, there's, we feel like life is asking us to hmm. sell our home and then just go who knows where. So see what happens. See what happens. You can't really plan anything, as you say. Uh, it's you know it. Isn't that the truth? Mm-hmm. I look at the schedule every week, and there's fewer and fewer shows. But because mm-hmm. it's not, it's not, uh, it's not occurring in the same way anymore. Which is the way life is now. Mm-hmm. I don't know about y'all, but it's like you know, you walk outside every day. You're saying it earlier. Like every day is a new day. It's not just yeah. the relationships. It's not just the person. It's the whole freaking world. You know? And it's so amazing, so exciting yeah. every day. Yeah. It really is. Well, I wish you guys the very best, and I'm I'm really uh, great grateful for you know just being uh, exposed to you and your energy, and uh, and I thank you for the work that you're doing because because it's the greatest work, you know, uh, raising uh, you know the love for yourself and you know for your partner and, and for life and for the earth and the whole nine yards. I mean, this is how it works. This is how it works. It works from soul center, right? Yeah. So thank you very much and all blessings to you. And I look forward to seeing you all again. And thank you so much for your patience and us getting back with you. Thank you for having us. It was really, really beautiful. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you did. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Peace thank out. you. For- Y'all take care. Yeah.